Now folks, it's Ron with Ideal. In this video, I'm going to show you one way to make a three bend saddle, bend in a half inch piece of EMT conduit here, using a hand conduit bender from Ideal. Now, the three bend saddle bend is kind of similar to an offset bend in the fact that you're going over an obstruction, but in this case, you're going to bend the conduit back down to the same plane, so to speak. And it's used most often when an obstruction like a piece of pipe is right encountered, you know, like along the length of a wall someplace. And it's actually three bends in that length of conduit you're going to make in order to create that saddle so that obstruction can go, you know, conduit can go with the obstruction and continue along its path, okay? Now, most commonly, you might use a 45-degree center bend here and then two 22-degree bends on either side of that. But you could use a 60-degree bend and then two 30-degree bends if you cared to. And you're going to use the same calculations for either set of angles. And you're going to need to make actually three marks on your conduit to make these three bends. Now, for this demonstration, I'm going to use our catalog number 74-026 ductile iron conduit bender here. Now, ductile iron benders typically are preferred by professionals uh, as they're going, to, they're going to last you longer. And then aluminum head benders here, which are lighter in weight, but they're not quite as durable as the ductile iron benders. Now, I also like to use the rubber bender boot we sell here uh, that will keep the or help keep the bender handle from sliding on me when I'm uh, making bends here in the air in a minute. And I'm also going to be working with a known length of conduit that I know is 60 inches long here, okay? But because of the three bends we're going to put into it, it's the, to create that saddle, uh, the overall length of the conduit will shrink by a little bit, and it's actually 3 16ths of an inch for every one inch of obstruction that you're going to go over. Now, in this case, the obstruction is this two inch piece of PVC pipe I've got here which actually has an outside diameter of more like two and three eighths of an inch. So I'm going to create a three inch saddle bend to go over that particular obstruction, okay? Using a 45 degree center bend and then two 22 and a half degree bends on either side of that. Now, using the chart in the ideal bending guide for uh, these saddle bends, I can see for a three inch obstruction, I'm going to move my center mark ahead by nine sixteenths of an inch. Now, that makes sense because we said 3 sixteenths for every inch and we've got a 3 inch obstruction and that makes the 9 sixteenths of an inch that's going to, uh, we're going to add, which is the shrink amount, so that we can add that to uh, make this center mark here, okay? Now the chart also says the other two marks on either side of the center bend should be at 7 and a half inches away from the center bend and that's going to be my three marks. So step one is to measure the distance you're working with from the last coupling to the center of the obstruction you're dealing with so the last piece of conduit to the center of the obstruction and let's say in my example that's 30 inches so step two is to add the shrink amount from the table to that measured distance and make my first mark from the end of the conduit here at 30 and 9 sixteenths of an inch okay now contractors typically are going to use a pencil to make that mark so they can erase it somewhere down the road in my example, I'm going to use a permanent marker and mark the conduit all the way around the, uh, the conduit so the mark will not get lost in the bender head uh, when I go to do the bending here in a minute. And the other two marks <clears throat> are going to be made at seven and a half inches on either side of the, again, the center mark. And again, mark the conduit all the way around so, uh, <clears throat> again, it doesn't get lost in the bender head. Now, saddle bends are done in the air not on the ground. So you're going to simply stand the bender up with the handle down like that and the head kind of closer to you like this, okay? And step three is to line the center mark up with the rim notch in the bender head here, okay? And the rim notch is what we call the, the center of the bend. And then you're going to, you know, low, lower, bend your knees and kind of lower your center of gravity and step one foot up against the handle so it doesn't end up slipping away from it. I got to kind of lean against away from me. And, um, Using constant pressure, I'm going to get kind of close to the bender head here so I can put constant pressure and bend the conduit to 45 degrees, okay, to prevent any wrinkles and kinks. So you don't want to bend out here because you'll end up with a bow kind of in your conduit, which is what you don't want. And how do I know I'm at 45 degrees again? Well, the bottom of the conduit will be even with that 45 degree mark on the bender head when you've got it at 45 degrees. Now, step four is to slide the conduit down and line up that outer mark that's kind of closest to you with the arrow on the bender head this time. Keeping in mind that everything you bent is on that side of the bender head, okay? And for both of these two outer bends, um, you're going to always want to make sure your hook is actually facing the center bend uh, of the saddle here, okay? 
And then you're going to rotate the conduit 180 degrees, okay? And again, make sure you're on that arrow mark, okay? Now, uh, you're going to use the handle of the, uh, uh, of the bender to kind of line up these two uh, bends here, okay? You can actually sight down them, the handle itself and see them. And anytime you've got two or more bends in a length of conduit like this, uh, there's the potential for what electricians call a dog leg, where the two bends are not aligned uh, properly. And obviously that causes some issues when we go to install it in a wall and doesn't make for a very professional looking kind of bend. And then using firm pressure, I'm going to bend this conduit to again, 22 and a half degrees. That's a little more. There we go. All right, very good. Now, we're going to take the conduit, step five, is to take the conduit completely out and, and you're going to flip it around here and you're going to line up that l last outer mark up again again with the arrow on the bender head <clears throat> and again everything i bent is already again on that side of the bender head and again my hook is facing the center bend here again of the saddle okay and then again i'm going to use the handle to line up all three of these bends you can again sight right down that to do that again i'm on the mark and then I'm going to go ahead and bend that to a, using constant pressure to, again, 22 and a half degrees. Okay. Now, this creates the three-bend saddle that easily goes over this obstruction. And you can see that the bottom of the conduit will clear a three-inch obstruction. Also, the middle of the center bend is right about 30 inches from the end of the conduit. So it's going to fit this application without needing to cut the conduit to length. And the overall length of 60 inches has been reduced to and is about 9 sixteenths of an inch shorter, which was the shrink amount we allowed for the center of the bend to be over that obstruction. And knowing how to make a three-bend saddle quickly and efficiently will make those jobs run that much smoother and add value to what you can do on that job site. And again, electricians, you know, they don't bend the conduit and then cut it to length. <laughs> if they know how to use their bender correctly, the conduit is the correct length for that particular job they're, do they're doing. And using a good quality hand conduit bender like this one from Ideal will provide accurate and professional looking bends that electricians kind of expect when they're on that job site. And if you'd like to learn more about the line of Ideal hand conduit benders, please visit our website or contact our customer service department. Hey, thanks for watching, folks. I'm Ron with Ideal, and I'll see you on the next one.